My name is Ryan Jennings. In 1998, I recorded two VHS tapes. Tape one was recorded with the simple but naive goal of getting answers. Tape two was my mistaken attempt at finding those answers. This is tape one, the where. Jennings. I'm a freshman at Bemidji State, but I've lived in Creighton all my life. So, uh, just for frame of reference, this is Bemidji, this is Black Duck, and this, where I'm pointing, is Creighton. I realize it doesn't look like there's a town where I'm pointing, but trust me, I can vouch for the fact this is where I am. This is just an old map from Dad's truck. Or some border dispute years ago, whatever. This is where Creighton is. So it all started the other day. I was on IM talking with this girl from Rochester. She was really cool. Like all the same music as me. We're talking about Nirvana and how it was obviously Courtney who killed Kurt. I mean, no effing way it was suicide. Like the angle of that shotgun, the way that... it wasn't suicide. Anyway, so we got talking about conspiracy stuff. I don't know much about rap, but she brought up Biggie and Tupac, and I did my best to try and remember whatever the hell people were talking about years ago. So then I ask her what she thinks about Ashbury, and she's like, what's Ashbury? And I'm like, you know, like Ashbury, Minnesota? I mean, I know she's down in Rochester, but it's not that far away. Everybody's heard stories about Ashbury. For context, hindsight being 2020, it was probably my hormones taking umbrage with her reaction more than anything. When you grow up in Creighton, Minnesota, you you kind of get used to people not knowing what's going on. I guess the best way for me to explain it is, it's like when someone tells you something, but they say it in a way where you're supposed to remember. Like there was some important event or moment that you shared but it obviously didn't mean as much to you as it does to them. Like, it's there. You know it's there. And you know you know it, but you can't remember it. That's how everyone reacts when you say you're from Creighton. It gets so you get used to it. People are just trying to be polite, and there's no sense in trying to explain where Creighton is or why they should remember in the first place. So it shouldn't have meant anything to me that she hadn't heard of Ashbury. It wasn't supposed to be there anyway. I guess I'll get to that at some point later. But as far as a girl from Rochester is concerned. But she hadn't heard of it. So I go through the story that we all know and nothing. She thinks I'm just making things up and gets mad at me for being fake. Which I'm totally not. I mean, I wanted to see if she'd be down to me during winter break, but... Now I don't think she wants to talk to me. I'm pretty sure she even blocked me on IM. Thanks for that, AOL. Bothered me a lot, though, and, uh... I wondered if she was pretending she hadn't heard of it as an excuse to stop talking to me, or... Or what? So I tried Lycos, Webcrawler, even Alta Vista, and nothing. Nothing on Ashbury, Minnesota. Nothing to do with May the 8th. I don't get it. I mean, I tried talking with some other people on IM from school and in a couple of chat rooms, but it was more of the same. No one had heard of any of it. Tell the truth, it's kind of freaking me out. The worst part, I couldn't find out anything about Dan. I guess if you don't know anything about me or Creighton, then you must not know anything about Dan Elsenhower. I mean, why would you? He's just a kid, but he disappeared five years ago. It never even occurred to me to look up stuff on the internet about it, but there isn't anything out there. There's nothing in the local papers, 
nothing anywhere. It's it's like no one outside of Creighton knows or cares that he's gone. I know it was five years ago, but shouldn't there be something about it in the Bemidji Pioneer or something? I mean, they've been around since like the 1890s. Uh, maybe they've got something on in like microfiche. I can, I guess I can try and find something at the library. I grew up with Dan. His mom moved to town when we were both in first grade. She just split up with his dad and I guess they were looking to get away. I don't really know why they moved to Creighton of all places. I mean, what seven-year-old asks that kind of question? And eventually they're your friends and you don't think about it. They live sort of on the outside of town, further back, closer to the dump in that cleared out patch of land where there are a few other trailer homes. I guess the particulars don't really matter. I mean, we were kids who went to K through 12 school. You pretty much become friends by default, at least early on. You know, you talk smack about each other when puberty hits, but then you make up. After graduation, a couple people move off down to the cities or whatever, but most people hang around. I don't know why that never occurred to me. If almost no one ever really leaves, why doesn't there ever seem to be more people in town? It was a day before Dan's 14th birthday. There really wasn't going to be a party. We were too old and cool for that, you know how it goes, but some of the kids were going to get together, watch movies, eat pizza, talk about who we made out with or who we wanted to make out with, you know, whatever we did back then. I know I saw him that afternoon when we left school. We lived in opposite directions, and I don't think we were even necessarily talking to each other, but I'm sure he probably said see ya, and he walked down the road to his house. Dan's mom swears that she saw him that night, told him good night, and then in the morning he was gone. I remember my mom telling me about it. Word travels fast enough around town. It wasn't breakfast the next morning, but I don't think it was long after when she told me it was missing. For a while, I'm guessing everyone thought he had a fight with his mom and ran away, or maybe there'd been something going on with his dad that nobody knew about. I think it was about two weeks later or so when they made an announcement in school. They said that if anyone knew anything or needed to talk about Dan being missing, that... They should talk with the teachers or the principal or, or Chief Donaldson. Mentioning the chief was what did it. It wasn't exactly subtle. Dan was for real gone. Like real, real. Maybe worse. Some of the girls in class cried. I mean, like, flat out bald, but I just sat there. didn't really sink in that he was gone and that he might not be coming back. Of all the things that I remember, what I remember most was going to my room after school and sitting on the floor with my knees curled up, trying to make myself cry. I know I'd seen people react that way on TV, and I guess I figured that's what I was supposed to do. It wasn't long after that Dan's mom moved away. I don't blame her. I mean, everyone in town thought she had something to do with it or that she was just a liar. She was a drinker, and people claimed she was actually at Izzy's tipping them back when she said she was supposedly at home with Dan. I don't know if there's any truth to any of that, but she never got arrested. And life went on. You never really forget, but you don't really remember either, you know? Maybe if they found a body, it would have felt different, but you just sort of lean on the other kids in class and you get through the year and the next year and the next year after that. I know it sounds like I don't care that he was gone, that he's still gone as far as I know, but I do. Even though it took me this long to realize why, for it to open my eyes. It wasn't just Dan who disappeared. 
not that day, I mean, in general. If you actually look at the numbers of people who disappear, Creighton has more missing persons and unexplained deaths than anywhere in the country. And I mean, it's not even close. I mean, like, ten times as many. And no one knows. Or they don't care. Hell, if they don't bother to put us on a map, why would they care if some podunk goes missing? And it's not just Dan. I mean, I remember hearing about Sally Johnson drowning in a kiddie pool when I was younger. She was 14, and the thing had about four inches of water. The Berg family moving away in the middle of the night but not taking any of their stuff? Just their car was gone? Everything is still in their house and all the doors and windows were locked? Peter Carlson. Disappeared last year and everyone said he was just a stoner who ran away. No, I never saw him smoking weed. Nobody ever saw him smoking weed or doing anything like that. There aren't ever any real answers. It's just what people say. But it's like even the people saying it don't care as long as it's not happening to them. Dan's mom still cares. I've seen her a couple of times since then. Once was about a year later. I saw her driving through town out towards where their trailer was. I biked after her thinking that maybe Dan had been in the car, but when I got there, I saw she was just standing out in the woods facing away from me about, I don't know, 20 feet or so inside the tree line, just, just standing there. Naturally, I got pretty creeped out, so I was about to leave, and that's when she turns around and looks straight at me. At first, I thought she was wearing a mask, and then I realized it was mascara running down her face, and she was crying. She just stood there, staring at me and crying. I went straight home. I told mom, but she just sort of scoffed. She didn't say anything about it, but I guess looking back, she probably thought Dan's mom was a kidnapper or a murderer or something, and she didn't want her around in the first place. I get it. I, I really do. Second time I saw her was at graduation last May wasn't exactly the longest ceremony in the world with all of 17 graduating seniors, but, you know, they try and fill it up with speeches and stuff. There was a little memorial to Dan that said, missing but not forgotten. By then, I, I don't know, probably thought of him every few months or so. Maybe I figured he was just going to school somewhere else, I don't know. I swear, though, I swear, the moment they mentioned his name, I saw his mom way out there, like way across the field, deep in the tree line. I saw her staring at us. Roger was sitting right next to me, and I tried to point her out to him. But by the time I got his attention, I had already lost sight of where she was. I'd be lying if I said that didn't creep the hell out of me. How can stuff like that not be noticed? Obviously, she's still looking for him. How aren't there posters or news articles out there about him? Or her? Or anyone from Creighton? I've since found out that Dan's mom killed herself. It was more a coincidence than anything that I even heard about it. I was working at a radio station in Iowa when the story came across the wire. According to the report, it was pills and booze. Newsworthy because she'd done it standing outside a playground she'd supposedly been stalking around for months. To the best of my knowledge, Dan's body's never been found. I'm still trying to figure out if there's some way for me to get an Angel Fire website going or something, but I figure until then I should at least get some of this stuff recorded. I mean, there's a lot more. Like, a lot. I don't know what you might have already heard, but I guess at this point I have to assume you haven't heard about any of it. Honestly, I don't know why, but it's really been bothering me. 
how could people not know about any of this stuff? I get that some of it's rumors and stories we tell each other, but I mean, some of it really happened. I know it happened. People die. People disappear. It's not a joke or something made up for whatever tourists wander through and stay at the bed and breakfast. So I guess this is the first tape. Just trying to figure it all out. Maybe I'll watch all this back and realize how dumb I'm being. But I swear there's something wrong. There's too many stories. There are too many graves in the graveyard for a town of 600 some people. We call Creighton Crazy Town for a reason, right? It's not something you ever think about. It's, it's just the way things are. The way things always have been. And maybe I'm just being paranoid, but if that's the case, then what could it hurt, right? I mean, if that's the case, then the only person who's ever going to hear these tapes is me. Before I get to the who, what, when, where, and why of now, I had to show you who I was then. I only made one other tape before I left Creighton. At the time, I had grandiose plans of getting footage of Ashbury and doing research on May 8th. All the other things that only seemed to be part of Creighton. But the only thing I got to was the Sinner's Game. And uh, it took me 18 years to come back to Creighton. It's been a long time coming, and honestly, it's a road I'm still afraid of going down. I hope you stick with me through this. I, I never thought I'd find myself back in crazy town, but this place took everything from me. And... Well, I guess you'll just have to listen next week. <laughs>